uh, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm going to install this Tamiya multifunction sound, lights, and vibration unit in this Smokey and the Bandit King Hauler. The King Hauler was designed well before this unit, so it fits uniquely, and I'm going to show how to program it, hook it up, how the lights work, and everything. So let's get started. Before I get uh, too far along, I want to talk about the basic uh, function of this uh, MFC unit. Tamiya designed this years ago uh, when radios were a little bit different than they are now. And uh, I want to go through just the theory. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab an old transmitter and a new transmitter. So this is a transmitter from the past. And you can see it has trim that just slide back and forth. And it, the MFC unit was designed so if you put this up, it would do one function. And if you put that up and that up, it would do a different function. Now the problem with that is modern radios have digital trims. They're just little switches. You can still do that, but it takes a long time to get the, the uh, trim all the way to the end and change the function. So what I'm going to show is how to program a dual rate switch to make the difference. So when you do this, it's one function. When you do this, it's another. So I will go through the programming of this, but I just want you to understand that the Tamiya instructions still show the slider trims, they still talk about moving this up and this up, and we're going to show a better way to do that, and you can do it with any modern radio that has a dual rate function. Um, these radios are, are basically obsolete. This used a, uh, this actually was on a ham frequency. But now with 2.4 gigahertz, you don't have antennas you need to extend and a lot of other things. So that's just kind of the basics as we get into it. In order to start on this, you can see my King Hauler frame. And what I've done, if you've already got a King Hauler that's built, and you're going to install one of these in it, I've removed the coupler plate. I've removed the chassis mounting deck and removed the seat mounts off of this. I've removed the step from this side, and I've removed the front and rear bumpers. You don't need to take the lenses out. So this is where you want to get started with your King Hauler. My two servos are here, my motor leads are here. Um, I'm ready to start installing the MFC. For the contents of the uh, MFC box, we've got the MFC unit, and this gives you the lights, the sound, and electronic speed control functions. We've got the little control box for it, which will mount inside of the step on this particular truck. We've got the speaker. We've got the speaker box, and this uh, speaker mounts in here, and that gives it a nice reverb effect, so you want to use the box. We've got the, uh, the weights that mount onto the motor that give the truck the vibration unit. Nuts, bolts, and screws, various types. The little um, backing for the lights are wiring. Looks more complicated than it is. This is the motor for the unit. Grease. Labels for the wiring. These are actually quite important. We'll talk about that as we go. Speaker grill and some uh, foam mounting. And then they give you some additional trees. This is a replacement coupler unit. The reason for this is with this coupler, when the trailer hooks up, there's a switch in it that activates the sound unit to make the trailer coupling and uncoupling sounds. A new coupler deck mounting plate. A new step box so you can mount the switches inside the step. And uh, some other mounting uh, pieces for different trucks. For example, the King Hauler doesn't use these pieces, but the Cascadia might, or the uh, Mercedes-Benz. The instructions are, when you first look at them, can be a little overwhelming because you start looking at this and go, oh my gosh, you know, this is crazy. There are all kinds of little switches and things to do, how to operate it. And then the back half is how to mount it in each truck. So here's a King Hauler, a Mercedes. This is how to assemble the, the box and the plates. How to mount the lights in the various trucks. 
the instructions go through a lot of trucks and these are some of the different trucks so you don't use all these instructions but we're going to go through the whole process in this video so this video is going to be long but you can always refer back to it when you're mounting an MFC unit. I'm going to do some of the sub-assemblies first. On the King Hauler, the speaker mounts on the mechanism deck like this, inside this box. So they give you a couple choices. There's a frame here. This is the King Hauler frame. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my speaker fabric on there. I'm going to mount the speaker to this with four screws and then drop it in the box, run the wire through the back hole and mount it with four of those. There's our speaker box finished. So the vibration motor, um, nothing terribly exciting. This mounts through here and then the counterweight just mounts on it like this. They give you two different counterweights. This counterweight is for the European trucks like the Mercedes Benz and the Volvo and this counterweight is for the King Hauler, Globe Liner, etc. So we're going to go ahead and mount that. Now, total, total critical on this is to use thread lock because, <laughs> as they say, this is a vibration unit and it vibrates like mad. So you definitely want to have thread lock on these. same thing we're going to get a bunch of thread lock on this set screw and the raised part goes on first so it clears the mounting bolts for the motor When that spins, it vibrates. This little box here just covers up the mechanism so we can mount things to it. So I'll get that screwed together. The uh, coupler builds just like the stock coupler, except for the installation of the uh, micro switch for the sound system in this little slider. So this one, we just want to put some, some grease in here, and there's a spring. Anytime there's a spring, I get nervous. The spring just sits inside here. That's installed properly, then the spring will push it back. So you can see when the coupler comes in, it moves this, and then this micro switch will bolt in here, and this will activate it. This little housing drops in right here, and it will hold the micro switch. Micro switch just mounts in it like this. Little arm there. And there's a screw that drops right through the switch. It'll help us hold it in place. It's a little bit tricky to get in. The wires have to fit around. I already Put some thread lock on the holes down below. So we'll just tag that in, and then there's a interesting little press nut that drops in here.
I was very careful when I assembled this truck to Loctite everything also because, like I said, this vibration unit is very effective and vibration will kill your, your truck if you don't Loctite everything. So we got that and then we drop a bolt in here and I also Loctited that plate. Now the, the pivot plate actually has to come off the original unit as does the, the uh, little attaching bar and the plate there. So I'm going to grab those out of my original parts. And here's the completed coupler plate. I'm going to go ahead and, while I've got this chassis sitting here, this just mounts in the original location. So I will go ahead and get those mounted up. Well, the last sub-assembly is our little control box. I've already pulled the screws out and it just opens up like this. It comes in this little housing, but we're going to use the chrome housing that they provided. And the first thing we need to do is put this sticker on that Tamiya provides. That just lays on here. Now before we mount this in the chrome box, we need to put the wiring harnesses on. The instructions, this is part of that confusing thing I was talking about that looks like a mess, but you'll see we have J11, J32, and J30 that plug into this housing. Go over to this page, you can say J30 is a 5-pin harness. There's only one 5-pin harness, there's only one 7-pin, and there's only one 3-pin. So we take those harnesses and they plug into the corresponding port in the back here, like that. So we want to do that before we install it in the housing. just like that. And this will be our final assembly. What I'm going to do next is hook this up and we'll start going through radio programming and uh, that is the complicated part. So this just mounts in the chrome box just like it did in the, in the black box. Just like that. So I'll screw that together and also there's a, a step that mounts on the bottom like that. And then that will mount in the standard location on the King Hauler. So I'll get that screwed together and we'll start on radio programming. Okay, I want to talk about the wiring a little bit. The instructions will show, for example, installing the lights in your bumper, uh, in the top of the truck, in the headlights, various turn signals. And uh, they'll give you a number like J23. And they call that our right and left blinker. So if we go to our code here, J23 is yellow and blue. So we find the yellow and blue, there's actually two of them, and pull out one of these stickers. So J23. The sticker also has yellow and blue on it. 
and we put this somewhere near the end that plugs into the MFC01. Not too close. Gets a little crowded in there when you start to plug them all in, and you just fold this around and tape it back on itself. So there's a J23 and J22 J24 is the other yellow and blue. And one of them is left and one of them is right turn. What those are going to be. So we'll put this sticker on. So what I'm going to do now is add these little sticker markers to every single harness. And that makes the installation go pretty smoothly. So I'm going to add those and then I'm going to install the, the lights. These just mount like this in the back bumper. And then the plastic cover just goes over the top of that with a screw and holds them in. So I'm going to mark these lights and install them. Before I can uh, plug my radio into the MFC, I need to set up the transmitter. Now this particular transmitter has been modified slightly so that the throttle stick is centering. That way the truck will stop if I let go of the throttle. Um, normally, to me it has you setting up the shift on this left hand stick, but I'm going to set up the shift on this three position switch up here, low, medium, high. So that's how I'm going to show the setup of this radio, but I'll discuss setting it up with this stick. Um, this particular radio is pretty straightforward. There's a, uh, there's a menu here, and uh, I can go to the setup menu by pressing one of these switches. And the first thing I'm going to set up, actually let me go back here. We'll go to the function menu. Uh, first thing I'll set up is the model name, just because uh, I, I use that to identify the transmitter. I use the up and down arrows to go to the menu, so I'll select model name, click the OK button, and then since this to me a semi, this King Hauler is going to be a Smokey in the Bandit truck, I will name it Smokey. So we'll just go here and find the S, click OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. You can see I changed the name. Now I'm going to set up the dual rates. So I'm going to go back to a menu. I'm going to go to the setup menu. I'm going to go down to the dual rates. And I want my, uh, my switch to be up when I have the, the lower rate and down when I have the higher rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channel 2 and then I'm going to lower the rate to 75% when the switch is up, okay, which will be my normal uh, stick travel. Then when I put the switch down it's going to be 100%. So this will be my normal functions and then when I flip this down that will be my extended functions and you can see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I can actually go to the display and what that shows me is where the servo is moving or where the stick's moving and you can see it doesn't go all the way to the end. When I flip this down, now it goes all the way to the end. So that's exactly what I want and that sets up my dual rates. I can go back to the menu. The next is going to be uh, assigning a switch for the transmission shifting. So I go to auxiliary channels and I want this switch to be on channel 5. And this switch is SWC. So I'm going to page through here until it says SWC and then I'm going to save that. Now I can go back to the display and now 
you will see that this switch is now on channel 5. So I have low gear, medium gear, high gear. So there's my transmission. Go back to the main menu. So now I have the transmitter set up the way I want and I can plug it into the MFC. So that's our next goal here. Before I go to the MFC, I just want to show quickly a Spectrum DX6E, which you can also set up. I don't normally use these because you can see the throttle doesn't have a centering position. I've never tried to modify one. Perhaps it could be modified. But you can do the same thing by setting up the dual rates right here. And you can set up your dual rate switch to be 75% and 100% on this stick just like the other radio I'm using. And so you can set up a DX6E or any other Spectrum radio that has dual rates just like the Turnigy radio that I'm using. So if you have one of these, it's possible to do it. To plug in the MFC to your radio, you use these wires right here. And the instructions list them. Uh, J4 is the steering, J5 is the throttle, J6 is just the input for all your lights and everything, and J7 is the shifting. So we're going to find J4. That's our steering. On my radio, that's channel 1. The, radi the radio receiver is marked with minus on the outside set of pins. That means the black goes out. So on my radio, J4 mounts to channel 1, J5 mounts to channel 3. J5 is our throttle. J6 is our light input, so that mounts to channel 2. And then J7 is our shifting. Now if you're going to have the shifting on this stick, you would mount it to, to channel 4. But since I assigned this, remember, to channel 5, I'm going to mount my shifting to channel 5. So that's how you hook the MFC unit to your radio receiver. What I've done is um, just hooked up all the main components. So I've got my bumper with a couple lights. I've got a servo to simulate the, the uh, steering and the shift servo. I've got the MFC plugged into the speaker and I've got a battery hooked up. So what I'm going to do is turn my radio on and make sure all the switches are up. Okay, so radio's on. So now I'm going to turn the switch on here while I hold down this little programming button and it should start up. Takes a minute to get going the first time. Okay, so it started. You can hear the volume. Now, you can see my, my shifting is on that servo and you can hear the shifting operation in the speakers. Uh, we should have a throttle. Okay, you hear the backing beeper when I go forward, so I'm going to have to reverse that channel. Steering, and gives me the uh, turn signals. And then here's what I was talking about with the dual rates. So we've got a horn, a long horn, and then if I flip to the dual rates, now the switch does something entirely different, which is lights. I don't have all the lights hooked up. So 
I can go through that, flip this back, and I'll have the horn again. So that's what the dual rates does replacing the slider switches. My shutoff sounds are just turning the radio off. Now I do need to map the radio to this and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm now going to map the sticks and what that means is I'm going to teach the MFC the stick positions. So first is to turn the unit on and it'll start up. Turn the volume down a little bit here so you guys can hear me. Now on the MFC there's a programming button right here. So what we'll do is we'll push that and hold it for one second and the engine sounds will stop and you can see a blinking light. Now we move the stick, so we start with the stick up to down and then center and that'll blink. Then we go down to up and then center and then we go right to left and then center and then up to down and then center. And then when we're all done we push that programming button again and the engine will start back up and all of our functions now work we'll shut it off here what we did with that mapping is taught the MFC that when the switch is all the way up that's when this is all the way up that's the end of the travel and then when we flip this we get the further position. It doesn't necessarily know every radio's position, so sometimes it's important to uh, to map it. Uh, I'm convinced that this is all programmed correctly, so now it's time to install it in the truck. Because of technical issues with the length of the video, I'm going to end this part right now and then continue in part two, and uh, we'll finish the installation in part two. So subscribe if you want to see that, or just hop on to part two. Thanks for watching.